you you just said something that you have to make the decisions to so you don't be so you're not frustrated. But what the thing that I worry about is like let you always talk about like ten years ago you almost quit to to sell cars. To me, that seems like a, a decision out of frustration that's not really fixing the frustration you have. So like what how how do you stop yourself from making the the car selling decision? In two thousand nine, when I got married, I moved up here to the valley. My wife was making good money. I had gotten a couple deals, a couple video show stations and stuff like that. I had, you know, done my name as Earl. I had done a bunch of shit. Rogan was paying me well on the road when I went out with him. And when I went out without Rogan, I made regular road money, which I did not mind, you know. I was okay. In 2009, when I decided that I wanted to sell cars, it was, it was not a frustration. It wasn't? No. It was me coming to terms with me. I had given it a New York run. I I got my movies. I got the headline. I was never going to go to Montreal. I didn't even know about Netflix then or any specials like that. I thought it was more of a give up. Okay. And it wasn't really going to be a give up. Oh. I was just going to do comedy in Los Angeles. Okay. That's it. And but that wasn't out of frustration. I didn't know. No, not at all. I didn't know about the comedy store then. I didn't. I thought I would never go back. The improv still gave me spots. I had my room in Brea. I was doing fine. I was doing fine. I was not a frustration. It was out of, I didn't know how to get to the next level. And at that point, I didn't want to go. I was pretty happy where I was. Okay. If it meant, I just saw a lot of things. I saw a lot of things in headliners, especially Ralphie. And I saw a lot of people changing and how their priorities changed and a bunch of stuff changed. But I saw a negative change in a lot of people. And I thought that if I had to do that every week like that, I would change. And I was very happy. I was very happy walking. My, in those days, I used to walk my wife to the train in the morning. And then I would walk around the neighborhood. And then I would go home and write for a few hours. And then... Every other weekend, every two weekends, I was opening up for Joe. And then I would pick up a weekend somewhere on my own once a month, and I would fly there and for 1500 bucks or something like that, you know, and my plane ticket would be like four. And it didn't really bother me because I kept my low overhead low. I wasn't out there acting like a fucking Gavon. <laughs> and me and my wife had a great living. My wife made good money, so I didn't have to fucking kill myself. I just didn't think that I was ever going to get the chance to go on the road, sell tickets and headline. I, I didn't see it coming. It wasn't a frustration move. It was just an honesty type move. Okay. I was just being honest with myself. There's guys that do comedy that I've mentioned before that when they wake up in the morning, they go, you know what? I love comedy. I love watching Netflix specials. I love doing an open mic every Monday to see the guys. And I like doing one week in the month. I, my job gives me a Thursday off to take off. And these guys, you see them, they got a smile on their face. And they're very content. What do you think, that there were other talented guys out of Seattle when I left? All those guys stayed in Seattle. And they're content with what they do. I'm not mad at them. They knew what they wanted to do, and they stuck to their plan. You know what? I'm going to live in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to go to Idaho. I'm going to go to Oregon. I'm going to go to Northern California, and I'll go to, you know, five states surrounding me. I got plenty of one-nighters up here, and I'm raising a family. Some people know where they stand. That's why I always tell people, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Before you make that wish, write down what exactly you want, what exactly it is that you want. You want to raise your family. You want to have enough time for your mom. You want to have enough time for your, for your kids. You know, what is it exactly that you want to do? There's a lot of people I knew, especially in Denver. I could tell you this. I could fucking count them in ten fingers. Guys that I did open mics with that told me to my face, like, I don't want to do that. That's not why I do this. 
I have a day job. I make great money. I have great insurance. I like coming here on Mondays. I go to this place, Club 52, on Wednesdays to get away from my wife <laughs> and work on material. And these guys are the type of guys that get good. They get really good, and they become writers for the other guys, the bigger comics in town. So they make a little scratch that way. But these guys don't ask for much. They don't want You could go up to them and go, listen, I got a gig for your Madison Square Garden. I don't want it. Wow. How about opening for me? I don't really want it. I'm going to have to leave on a Thursday, and I'm going to have to get a sitter for my kid. They have already predetermined what type of career they have. I have a friend that's a professional musician, and I grew up with a kid that has a bar band. He's my age, 55 years old. He has a great band called the Past Masters. They do all covers of songs. They do weddings. They do bars. They do racetracks. They're one of the most popular bands in New Jersey. That's how he wants it. He's an engineer. They take the summers off. So do you think that do you think that where someone like like Rudy Sarzo might be frustrated if that was his life because he wanted more, but because these people knew what they wanted, there's no frustration. There's, there's no there. frustration. If you know what you want ahead of time, there'll be no frustration. If you write it down, you're comfortable with it. You know, and if let, let's say something else happens, then something else happens. It's a cherry on the fucking Sunday. It's a cherry on the fucking Sunday. But frustration is something you have to look at because frustration comes mixed with anger. And then on top of that mixed with anger, it throws doubt in your next move. So, but that main character is frustration. You have to get him out of the way. Then the anger will disappear and the doubt will disappear. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody... <laughs> Did an error. I knew a second ago, but now <laughs> keep keep going from where you told it, because then okay. <laughs> you know that little forehead you got. 